Hey everyone, welcome back to a new episode, another week of the Retro Gamers Podcast. Listening, watching, whatever, taking it in, soaking it in like a sponge. Larry here. And Anthony here. What's going on, Ant? How you been for another week? Uh, it's been another glorious week here in La La Land. <laughs> hey, that's where I should live. It's true. It, it, it's, it's practically named after you. <laughs> as it should be. Uh, no, very cool. Very cool. The uh, weather's holding up as we uh, had some terrible rain today. Oh, I, yeah, I heard there was some rain going on out there. Yeah, and that is the uh, the current events, the weather portion of the podcast. Yes, well, it was uh, cloudy here today. Oh, that's that's just... Uh, that, well, that's, that's scary coming. for September. Terrible, yeah. <laughs> well, so. well, September's long gone by the time this drops. That's We're right. now in October. Fall is with us. We're getting into Halloween, which yes. for some reason is almost more popular than Christmas, which I can't understand, but hey... That's not me. Well, you know, Halloween's when all the freaks get to come out. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's your birthday month, Ugh, so that's yes. fun. I mean, <laughs> Big one, too. We'll talk about that in a couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not talking about that. But, yeah, you know, Halloween, the free. You know, Halloween's, I think, the one night where we're allowed to go outside. It's uh, you're allowed to go out, and, and you got to, you know. No, I mean we as in the two of us. Oh, oh, yes. Like, no, we actually get to leave our homes, you know, this, this or our very- holes. You know? What's great? Here's what's great because I think your entrance is like near, like around the house or something. The entrance to my apartment's the back of the house, so that means no trick or treaters. Oh yeah, no, I never get trick or treaters here because yeah. I'm at the I'm at the I'm at the end of an alley. Nobody comes to my door yet. Yep. Jehovah's Witnesses find me. <laughs> well, they're knocking on any door they see. I know exactly. They they seem to know I'm here. <laughs> Meanwhile, I go and order a pizza and I put in the instructions back entrance of the door and they still can't find it i i don't understand yeah i know my neighbor all the time has to send them to the back even though i tell them <laughs> walk down the alley they knock on her door oh well that's how it works yeah, yeah it is what it is it is what it is uh, but it's october so it's october it we've got halloween Thank- coming we do we have halloween coming the movie's coming out the holiday's coming out uh i'm if anyone finds the atari game you can play that that's when true you get a chance there's uh, also Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. This is true. Which there. I actually went to. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. How I, was that? I went to it last week. Um, it was a blast. I, I mean, right. um, they, they did a really good job. Um, that, some really great mazes this year. For people who haven't been to uh, Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios, they set up nice uh, horror-themed mazes all throughout the, uh, the studio. Uh, the theme okay. park and the studio lot. They actually cordon off part of the back lot. Oh, so you really? actually, yeah. So you actually have to walk on the back lot to get to some of the mazes. Oh wow! Which, which is kind of cool because like, yeah, we got to walk down past like New York Street and stuff like that before we went into some of the mazes. Okay. But um, uh, but it was really cool uh, because um, I know people here. Uh, <laughs> you got I, connections. Yes, because I have connections. Uh, I got early entry. Uh, oh. Lucky. Which was t- uh, so a bunch of people get early entry, but like, and it's mostly employees and people who know employees. So, um, got early entry, which was uh, so we got in two hours before wow. general open, which okay. was great, which was great and funny at the same time because for the two hours we were there, it was still daylight, <laughs> and uh, they're probably like still setting up, they'll you know, yeah, they're and they're like, still setting right. up stuff. But the thing about the mazes is they're all indoors, so you can still go through the mazes, and you're you know, they're all dark, um. Yeah. And a lot of them are themed, most of them are themed off of movies, and every year the movies change. So um, this year they had set up, um, I think it was eight mazes overall. Um, and then, uh, so you had really cool stuff. You had a Stranger Things maze, oh, wow. which, was, uh, which was really fun. Uh, Trick or Treat, if you've ever seen that movie. Did you ever see the horror movie oh, Trick or Treat? I never saw, I'm not into, I mean, we were well, growing up. I don't know how I hung out with you guys. You were all into horror. I know, I'm and you really were. into it. I never but uh, Trick or Treat's a really good horror movie, uh, and the maze was good, too. Uh, Poltergeist. Ooh, which, all right. Yeah, there. which was my <laughs> second favorite maze. Um, it was, uh, they did such a good job. Like, they, they, re, they built a small version of that house. <laughs> so, um, and it's actually there. Uh, no, he was not. Um, but the, uh, but then you got to walk through the house and a lot. They did a yeah. There were a lot of good scares in there, straight right. out of the film. Um, the animatronics they made were amazing. And actually, uh, I videoed, uh, I recorded the my walkthrough, which uh, 
you can see Larry on my Facebook page. Um, <laughs> it's not on the Retro Gamers Facebook page, of course, because it's not within theme of Retro Gamers, but you can see it. Um, and then there was a, a Halloween 4 maze. So Which one was that? Halloween 4 was the one where um, he broke it's out and specific. went after. That's the one where he went after um, his niece. Was Paul Rudd in that one? No, Paul Rudd was in part 6. Oh, okay. Part 4 was uh, Danielle Harris. Okay, I remember. The okay, little girl. Yes, 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 yes. So, so they did one based off of that theme, and that was really cool. But then the best maze, because we got through all of the mazes, um, you know, by like nine o'clock, which was okay. great. So, but the the best maze was for me the Universal Monsters maze, which Ooh. basically took all the classic monsters: so Dracula, yes. Frankenstein, the Mummy, Werewolf, um, and they made Creature a maze. Black Lagoon. Uh, I, Creature wasn't there. Oh. Um, but the other guys were. Um, okay. And they basically made a maze built off of them, and I just thought they did a phenomenal job with it. So That's all awesome. in all, super scary. A lot of my friends were jumping and scaring. I spent the entire time laughing. Um, <laughs> because you have no soul. <laughs> uh, it's true. I, well, I, I was literally walking through the mazes, and, you, you know, like, freaking, like, the, the Demogorgon jumps out of nowhere, and he just jumps right into my face, and I'm like, <laughs> and I just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, I got my friend. I, love it. I have like friends like screaming and jumping oh, all over sure. the place, and I'm like, but it was it was great. I had a great uh, had a great night. Um, definitely something worth doing if you're in the Orlando area or the Hollywood area. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, just a great Halloween experience. All right, cool. And you know, Universal Monsters that's classic. I'll consider that retro. You know, with the retro is, gamers, but we that's do very like... retro. Not counting the Tom Cruise movie. Yuck. Oh, I am um, stayed away from that. Uh, speaking of retro, just to and, and, and it's funny, you're like, no, you know, I'm not going to post it on Retro Gamers. This I posted on the Retro Gamers Instagram page just for fun. Sometimes it's oh, fun I show. saw you post this. Yes, yeah, show out what we are outside of, of the, the gaming. Uh, they showed from one night only. They showed in the theater the Transformers the movie, the old 1986 yes. cartoon movie. Um, How was I it on never, the big screen? What happened? How was it on the big screen? I loved it on the big. I mean, I never seen it in the movie theater, mm-hmm. um, not originally. I've seen it a hundred times since then, but to see it up there, and it was yeah. like, like it wasn't even like a like a high def version. It was like the original version, okay. which I loved. You know, grainy. Did, did you cry? Did you cry when Optimus died? You know, I, I I'll admit it. I'm a man. I can admit it. I started to well up a little bit. When nice. Optimus turns, you know, when he turns gray, it's like that's your childhood I know. being destroyed. In that was front- awful too. I mean, they couldn't even let him stay like red and blue. They had to turn him gray. I, I mean, terrible. Like he rusted the, before our sight. And the worst part about it, we end up with Rodimus Prime. Please. Oh, please. hot rod. Uh, um, and you know, it's just it's just the the movie was just it's always been fantastic. Before the movie, they showed a very quick kind of like sneak preview of Bumblebee that's mm-hmm. coming out, and how did which that look? I am stoked about. I cannot wait because Bumblebee, which is not a prequel, it's actually like a reboot, mm-hmm. which for the better, um, I feel it's going to be the movie we always wanted and hopefully the movie we deserve. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Tail. <laughs> um, because it's all Gen 1 Transformers. Oh, that's good. It, did you see the trailer? No, I haven't. Oh my god, you got it! I'm gonna ruin it for you right now. So no, I, yeah. See, I, I don't watch trail. I try not to watch that many trailers anymore because agreed. they give away too much of the film. Agreed. I usually just watch besides a teaser trailer. I'll mm-hmm. watch the first official release and then I'm done. But this one, I'm gonna tell you right now. Bumblebee obviously is a bug, mm-hmm. a Volkswagen Beetle. They show Optimus Prime, who's original OG Gen One Optimus Prime. Okay. The way he looked in the cartoon. Awesome. Soundwave is in the movie. Great. Shockwave About time Soundwave is in the movie. I, I'm telling and he looked, they look like the figures. They look like the cartoon. Mm. When I saw Shockwave, I was like, what? And I'm, even though people are debating whether or not it's him, I'm pretty sure it's Starscream. Like just okay. G1. I can, and it takes place in 1987. So okay. Is, uh, did Michael Bay do it? No, it's. Um, okay. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but it's not Michael Bay. It's a guy who did, who I think he directed Coraline. He directed, he directed a lot of like the stop motion movies. Okay. Um, or he was part of those something because I know they showed Coraline. Like, hey, you know he directed something. Yes. Um, but it just looks amazing, and it's just, it's what I hoped. Wish the original Transformers like the Shia LaBeouf Transformers mm-hmm. was, 
even though I accepted the difference in the Transformers, even though right. it still bugged me Bumblebee was a Camaro. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to this one. John Cena is in it, from what I understand, but you can never see him, so I don't know if it's really him. Um, it comes yuck, out yuck. Christmas. <laughs> comes out Christmas and it's gonna be really cool and then afterwards they interviewed um, they showed an interview with uh, uh, Stan Bush talking okay. about two iconic songs from the movie uh, Dare and You Got the Touch uh, fun Stan. fact You Got the Touch was originally written for the Sylvester Stallone movie Cobra oh really yeah that would have been weird uh, you know? yeah I don't I don't see how that works so ah we nawa greet nitty bomb yeah that's Moving universal on. eating. Come yes, on. I know. Move on. In any event, so that was really fun. That's pretty much what I did this week. And, um, you know, for this episode, we talked before we went on the air, and we thought, now that we're doing the po- uh, the podcast on YouTube, so this is going to be more of a YouTube heavy. So if you're listening, I mean, continue to listen. We love it. You, this one, you may want to bounce over to YouTube. To a, subscribe. And B, yes. um, you know, check out the episode because this week we're talking about – Because if you join us on YouTube – you not only get to see our faces, but you get to see these little faces as well. This is right? true. You get to see Link right. and Snow. Link and Snow. This is Snow. Snow, Ooh. who is just ready to just rip someone's jugular out <laughs> at the yes. moment's notice. Well, she seems perfectly fine right now. No, no, today she's looking calm. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about, and we kind of touched on it a little bit last week when I showed how I picked up Shiny Force 3. Yes. Um, and it didn't have the manual, and it kind of... I started Sorry, looking I on shift there. No, it's all right. I started looking on eBay. Figure, pick up the manual for Shiny right. Force to complete it. And even though I didn't find the manual yet, by golly, a lot of people are selling Shiny Force Three, and my God, complete like you even mentioned is going for a lot of money. I know. It's why I still don't own it. It's crazy. Some of it's worth like to me, full complete set, not sealed, not factory mm-hmm. sealed, but complete. Look, two fifty. Dare I even say three hundred? If it's really pristine, right? For that game, I feel well worth it. Whether or not you want to spend it, it's up to you. Whether you can do that, but I feel well worth it. Um, but yeah, just some of the prices, even just like disc alone, was mm-hmm. still triple digits. Yeah, it's it's absolutely crazy. And like I said, like um, there was an unopened one I saw in there uh, up there once that was like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. I saw an unsealed one, all complete, but. Not factory sealed, and it was still someone was asking for like eight hundred. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting how um, certain games get that type of notoriety, where the, you know, it, you know, it's always, you know, demand. Demand usually increases value as well as you know supply or lack of supply, and you know, certain games have, um, you know, that, certain games just didn't. Um, that didn't sell well back then, or that weren't weren't created in abundance. You know, will always have more value, especially when all of a sudden everybody wants them. I mean, that's just, we're not talk- That's just how it goes. No, agreed. And I'm not talking like the price gouging, like we saw with the classics. That's just that's just sickening. Mm-hmm. But these games, yeah, you know, it's either like you said, the lack thereof. They're not really circulating anymore. Not a lot were in print, or maybe they were just for some reason commercial failures but found found love you know if you will yes. um later on so this is not working right now but i'm gonna fix it there we go so um so basically what we're gonna talk about today is some of the boxes and you are gonna have a lot more than i do but i know you're not gonna show all of them no definitely um <laughs> we're gonna show the box sets that we have and when i say box sets meaning the game's complete in box yes um Mine, some of them may or may not have manuals, uh, and I just really started Same mine. recently. Kind of some games I bought, and then I bought the box later on. So, um, but I figured this would be fun on YouTube, just kind of show some yeah. of that collection. Well, and it's also you know, and and if you don't watch us on YouTube, and or you you know you prefer not to watch and just listen on whatever you know on speaker or. Uh, Spotify or wherever you listen to us. I mean, we will we'll describe what we're showing anyway because oh, yeah. that's usually what we do when we talk about these. And I mean, you want to talk about collection? I mean, you know, at least all this mess back here. Yes. Uh, that's what I got. Had and you can see a lot of it's yes. Apart and then and then up. just uh, I just pulled the boxes. Yes, and just another thing to note. Also, we're talking. We're also talking about boxed games. Uh, but we're talking about specific games that you that we have in box 
that you don't normally keep the boxes for. So in other words, like games like you would have on your PS4, your Xbox, your PS2, your Dreamcast, your PlayStation, or even like your Sega Genesis, like those, you you know, in general, you kept the boxes because the games were housed in the boxes. So we're talking about more, you know, we're talking more along the lines of like Atari, Nintendo, um, games like that where you you would generally throw the box away because you are you just kept the cartridge absolutely correct that's what mm -hmm. and that's really my majority is going to be nintendo and super nintendo i mean i got i got mm -hmm. Gen some genesis games as you can see back there but like anthony said yeah you keep them in the box so exactly um, so we're, we're going to stick with the ones where you don't normally keep the box yes so i'm going to go first um because i want to and so let me see. Makes uh, sense. Um, let's go. Let's start Japanese uh, because there's a few games that when Anthony made his trips to the uh, to the Orient, he pulled uh, some sweet games for me and some nice boxes, too. Yes. So I'm going to let's let's do this. All right. So first, I'm going to start with three games for the Super Famicom. Um, and we may you may have seen these before. Oh uh, no! Actually, no. We weren't filming for YouTube back then when we were doing no, this. No, so we were not. We definitely weren't. May not have. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of these usually I'll take a picture of and post them, but be that as it may. So first and foremost, a couple cool. Oh, that one's got stickers on it. A couple cool wrestling games. First one here, Super Fire Pro Wrestling Special. Yes. Um, nice. And and these boxes, you know, it's funny when you first started bringing these over for me, um, and even for yourself, showing them. These packaging was a lot different. Uh, a lot different, but different enough than the Super Nintendo packaging that we got here in the U.S. Yeah, and the other thing to keep in mind also uh, that we that we should explain to our listeners is that um, when I did do all those trips to Japan and I went to the stores there, um, uh, I learned really, really quickly that um, Jap the Japanese take really good care of their stuff. So when you get when, when I was buying these games, like I was literally astounded mm -hmm. that like the boxes were so well kept. Now granted, they did sell games loose as well, but mm -hmm. the ones that were housed in their boxes, like the boxes, the quality of the boxes were just still top notch. We're talking about games that are, you know, some of them are 25, 30, 35 years old, and the and boxes which, look so good. And I have a couple of examples of those I'm gonna show in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, so, and, and the, to explain, you know, the, bo the Super Famicom, boxes i would equate them almost to a v old vhs they're, tapes. they're close to vhs style yeah. yes a lot more a lot more uh, art on it yes and uh you know of course it's all in japanese but so yeah super fire pro wrestling's got a little bit what i like to call love you know we see the scratches and the dents and everything and the wear and tear but hey listen yeah not that's perfect. gonna happen i was just um, gonna say that yeah and considering that it i think it costs like three dollars Oh yeah, these were these were inexpensive. Uh, the next one I have is for the Super Famicom Super Fire Pro Wrestling Three, which again, beautiful art, almost looks like Castlevania for a split second. When you it look it at really it. does. Nope. Um, makes me wonder oh. which uh, which character that is. Uh oh, for sale and use in Japan only, and that's in English. Hey, so. you know what? I bought it in Japan, so <laughs> this is true. So uh, so we got that happening, and a game I didn't even know they made on. Super NES or Super Famicom. Thought it was really Game Boy only. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't, I don't know the official title other than Pacross. I don't know if this means anything in Japanese. Oh uh, yeah, Mario Pacross. Mm -hmm. I guess we can call it Super Pacross. Yes. Um, and I haven't, had, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but I, I really plan on very soon. So. And if um, you do stream it. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I gotta stop saying that. <laughs> so I said about a hundred times on the last episode. Um, that you did. Okay. So those were the uh, Super Famicom games. Now, you were just mentioning how games 25, 30, 35 years old still really held up good. I got two games here that I'm really happy to own. Uh, the first one here, you know what, I'll start with the newer one of the two, Super okay. Mario Brothers 3. Ah, yes, for and, the Famicom. Yes, now our boxes here in the U.S. for the Nintendo were long. You know, they were, yep. they were long ways. They were definitely um, bigger, lo longer, and wider. Yep, and and big like you know, like we talked about last week, they had to put like a foam piece in the bottom. Yep. you know, just to keep everything in. Here, the box is basically just big enough for the cartridge. Yeah, and well, and also keep in mind the Famicom cartridges are a lot smaller than the NES cartridges. Very true. 
Um, so yeah, so beautiful artwork there for Super Mario Brothers three. Uh, you get a lot of the screenplay and the screen grabs on the yeah, back. Yeah, I do. Of it. I do love that box. That's a great yeah. box. A beautiful looking box. And here's the one that's even older. Got a couple stickers on it, but that's okay. Uh, the original, well, not the original, but the first Super Mario Brothers. Yes. And this, I mean, again, it's got some, it's got some love to it. Um, the back, you know, very, actually the back of this box is just very straightforward. It has some sort of description on it. No, uh, no screen photos. The thing I love about this box is what the hell is going on with Bowser? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm assuming that was uh, the original design for him or, or whatnot. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. He's gray and blonde on the front cover of this. So. Yeah, so he got a dye job. Very, <laughs> very odd. It's, it, you um, know what? It was all the rage back then. <laughs> Two, again, beautiful, beautiful boxes, and I love these. I'm not taking these out. Uh, and it, like Anthony says, goes to show how in Japan they really – really hold on to the pristine of of the boxes yes yeah and that was something i that was something i definitely marveled at while i was there because it was great because you know larry you know you know how much of a completionist i am it's like when i buy a game it's like i want i want all the pieces i want the box i want the instruction booklet all of that and it's really hard to find that for a lot of u.s games unless you're willing to pay through the nose um, yes. But going to yeah, going to Japan, I mean, uh, it was just amazing to not only see these complete things, but to see how affordable they were. Now, granted, yeah. some of them were um, more expensive than others. So, like mm-hmm. uh, the, like Super Mario Brothers, I think I think the first Super Mario Brothers was like, I want to say like fifty bucks. It complete. was yeah, it was a little more expensive. But, yeah, right. But generally, I mean, that, that's how much it costs brand new when you bought it. So well, to compare it. I got a better one to compare it to when when you when you texted me from Japan. Um, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past and Super Mario World. Yes, the, you have available loose or in box, and like in box was almost triple price mm-hmm. for the two of them. Worth it, don't get me wrong. Yes, definitely worth but it. I, I was like, eh, I can't afford that, so you got me the loose cartridges, which are cool. Yeah, but yeah, the price difference between loose versus yeah. complete sometimes is astronomical. I know, and one of the one of the stores I actually went to had an unopened copy of Link to the Past for five hundred. Wow, that again yeah. worth it. I, uh, I, next, I did not buy it though. <laughs> next one, uh, I actually picked this up. I think at Chiller Theater, which I'm going to be going to at the end of the month. Uh, oh, Super funny, Nintendo. so will I. Yes, that's right. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting Carmen Electra's autograph. Hey, hey. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I haven't looked at who's going to be there. I was more interested in uh, in. The video game portion of that. So, um, I, I gotta no, look. You, you may be gravely disappointed, but they have some cool stuff. No, sometimes. no, no. I mean, I, I love the horror stuff. You know that. No, no, it's cool. The whole whole thing's very cool. Uh, so this one is WWE Royal Rumble for the Super Nintendo. That is incorrect. It is WWE Royal Rumble. That because is incorrect. Is, because if Vince McMahon is anything, he is a revisionist historian. That's right. But if you look at the logo on the front, it is WWF Royal Rumble. All right. So WWE Royal Rumble. So in box, uh, I do like it. This was a very cool uh, looking box uh, with the wrestlers on the front and yep. all classic wrestlers except for Bret Hart, who I don't like anymore. Um, and the back of it just lists the characters. Got some nice screenshots. Mm-hmm. Um, and this just your typical classic iconic Super Nintendo box with the Super Nintendo logo on the bottom. Uh, this one again's got some wear and tear to yeah. this one. Well, and, and, and I, you know what I love about that box? Not to interrupt you, but um, yeah. if you look at the characters on the front, everybody is posed specifically, except for one person. Yeah, it almost looks like they superimposed the chair into his hands. Right, exactly. So yeah, Perfect. yeah. So Mr. Perfect, it like because everybody else is striking like a regular, like like a model's pose almost. Like you know when you yeah. do when you do a photo shoot, like all of the other guys have their photo shoot poses. Mr. Perfect does not. <laughs> I guess he was busy that day. Yep. Or they wanted a, they just wanted a different shot. I don't know, but it, it, <laughs> it's interesting when you notice stuff like that. Little things. now, infor- now unfortunately with this one, I got the instruction booklet, but all I have is the cover of the instruction ah uh, that stinks <laughs> but the the game itself is still in very good condition okay. so yeah very nice on and that that's one. the important thing also about it it's like you know as long as the games are in good condition and you can play them as well you know that's why i still buy games even though they're not complete in box oh absolutely ultimately i totally. want to play them i want to collect them and i want to play them 
Totally. Now I'm going to move on to my NES because I have a bigger NES uh, box collection. Um, so I'm just going to go right into it in no particular order. First one here, which is I, all, I discovered this recently, actually, and also even more recent, realized this is more of a Turbo Graphics game, mm -hmm. but it was released on Nintendo. It's called Dragon Spirit The New Legend. Oh, yes. Beautiful mm -hmm. box. Um, Very nice. A lot of these I picked up from Game On. There's one I'm going to show which I was a fine, like a complete out of nowhere find. Uh, this one, again, just to open it up, I'm not going to open all of them, but just some of them here. Uh, cartridge in almost pristine condition with the label. With the and label, label's very important. I have got a little bit of wear and tear, but definitely got the instruction booklet with it as well. Cool. So that is good. I can't take all these out because I'm not going to put them back in. Um, this is one of two... Yes, one of two where I already had bought the cartridge and then later on the box was available. So I ended up picking up the box yeah. and threw it in there. First one, in my opinion, oh, I didn't realize that. In my opinion, one of the best, and you know how I love uh, vertical scrollers, side oh, scrollers. Yeah. One of the best, one of the original. We're talking Capcom's 1942. Oh, uh, yes, 1942. Part of the Captain Commando Challenge series, which on a side note, Captain Commando just became available on Switch, uh, PS4, oh, cool. and Xbox One. Very nice. Um, will it be victory or defeat? It is in your skillful hands. The Capcom defeat it box, is. Yeah, well, I never really got far in this one. Um, you know, it's funny. The Capcom boxes, like Nintendo, you had those original black box. Nintendo. Yes. Um, yeah, the, the, like, the very generic ones like baseball, tennis, pinball, those games. Yeah. Oh, even yeah. Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, yeah. you know, those will like it as well. Um, a lot of the companies kind of had their own box style. Like Capcom always had this this grid in the background mm -hmm. for the early games and then yes. whatever the actual game itself. Uh, I like that look to it. I, yeah. I always enjoyed that look. And remember, I mean, when, uh, when NES was coming out with games, we were also coming off of... Um, video game systems that basically, I mean, and honestly, it was the box art that sold them. So, you know, like Atari and Television, ColecoVision, they all relied on the box art to sell it because there was no other way to really sell you on a game. Yep. I mean, you would see commercials on TV and stuff like that, but that was really it. And and for the most part, you know, they didn't make com they didn't make commercials for specific games back then. It was more for the system. So you would buy the, the system. Uh, yeah, and and you know you're right because with Nintendo you started getting the the screenshots, you started to get commercials. Mm -hmm. um, the next box, which is another again series where the company put out a lot of the same type of box, uh, Konami, mm -hmm. and this one my favorite game of all time on the NES, Contra. Uh, of course, you have to have that a, one. A, another one where I had the cartridge first and then I came across the box later. Uh, very nice uh, box again, got some creases in it. Um, I think all I have in here, yeah, is just the cartridge. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Konami had that silver box look to it. Yes. The Castlevania series was on there. The Gradius ones were like that. Um, and again, another one that I quite enjoyed where it was just that silver look, whatever superimposed uh, game on it. And, of course, the screenshots in the back. Yep. And Gotta sell course, it. You, the most important thing, always have that Nintendo seal of approval. Well, and you know, and the look of that box, it's uh, it was timely as well for those guys. I, it it kind of got has like that Rambo Commando esque kind of oh, look. So it's think? like, yeah, <laughs> oh, you me... get to be uh, you get to be like either Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone without actually being them. <laughs> uh, I also have a nice sleeve. You know, these sleeves are very oh convenient. the plastic well, sleeves. Yep, yep, those were always helpful. You know, uh, video stores, uh, video rental stores used to have the boxes in the sleeves so they wouldn't get damaged. Yep. Uh, same things with the pops. I got a lot of pops in these type of sleeves, so nice. uh, very cool Contra. Hey, uh, trivia. Uh-oh. So the no. Nintendo seal of approval is always on games. Correct. It's always on the front of the game. There's one game box where the seal of approval is on the back. Yes, we've talked about this before, and I've forgotten the answer. Um, yeah, I've forgotten it. Just <laughs> Anticipation. I was going to say that. Funny. So, uh, next one. This is one of the early ones I bought when we started doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six more, but I'm going to start to blow through them, so don't worry about it. Okay. Um, 
This one is one of the first ones I bought when we started doing the podcast. This one has no manual, but the game, I keep forgetting it. Here's the other thing. When I have the boxes, mm -hmm. I forget that, I, I don't know why. When I say I forget, it's like, oh, I wish I had that game. Duh, the game is in the box. So I usually forget that I have the cartridge. Um, but this, Spy Hunter. Uh, Spy Hunter's a great game. Great I can I, I can honestly say, though, I never got really far in it. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, again, full disclosure, I never got to the boat. Me, uh, me neither. Yep. Uh, the box looks beautiful. Again, it's got some wear and tear. There's no manual to this one. Uh, but this was an original uh, rental at Dave's Video Incorporated over there in St. James, New York. All right, Dave's. Out here on Long Island. Okay. Mm, I I'm bet you're not there now. I was going to say, unfortunately, they may not be there anymore. So I'll cover that up. That's just a fairly good right. assessment. Very nice. Very good copy. Very good copy of the game. So that's going to go to the side. Okay, this next one is a ROM. I'm not even going to say a prototype. It's a ROM. Okay. The box itself, I know, is a print. Like, it's not an original box. Um, the cartridge is not an original cartridge. But the ROM inside of it, you know, was downloaded and put it on put on here. Um, this is, let me just take the glare off the, uh, the plastic sleeves. Of course. That's what kind of pulls it. This, I wish this came out, but I did play this a little bit. The California Raisins, The Grape Escape. Wow. And as we discussed on a previous uh, episode, I love the California Raisins. Yeah, I think you're the only person in the world who does. Ah, I'm come on, Sign Sealed Delivered. That album is fantastic, Meet the do, Raisins. Do, do you have that album? My dad had the album, and then he handed it down to me. Okay, well, see, probably, now, well, now, I can't, now I can't say anything about it because your dad had it. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Butch. He loves that album. Yeah. Um, so, again, this is a repro of the box. Uh, but still, I just thought it was just cool to own because you really don't see stuff like this. Even on a repro, it's still sometimes well worth it, in my opinion. Even I don't know. It I, I, always, I, I, it's debatable what repros. I always, I always, I always okay. have an issue with repro. Agreed. Um, even though on the back, it even says box designed by and then the website. So, mm -hmm. uh, But I like that one. California Raisins, nice purple box and a game that never was released all right so so i stop reaching over let me just grab these final four uh let's talk about this one again going back to konami talking about that gray box the gray look to it top gun uh uh yep i i, I i'm choosing not to show that one but i have that one i have top gun one and two okay i don't have to i don't i never even played two i gotta play that i one never right. played it either but i own it uh clearly this was a rental at some point oh yes it was the sticker and what, what did that say n n126 n126 my nice. rental number when i was little was m i think like 321 or something if I, oh, I, I don't remember mine yeah uh great great you know again clear uh, cool. uh screen grabs and speaking of which my father again the only person in my household who was able to successfully land that plane almost every time and my and my father was the only one who was successfully able to refill the plane with gas yes my dad too with refuel. Refuel. i don't uh, understand i don't understand how he refueled the damn thing i was like i can never do it was your father in the air force yes okay that's probably because that was mine oh is so, that why maybe i don't know because he was in the air force he could refuel a plane in a video I, game got it my dad never got flew it. he wasn't a pilot but he was in the air force I so I guess my dad didn't fly either <laughs> <laughs> this one's got some uh it must have been like a water log or something like that uh, yeah a little Doesn't damage a little bit but yeah, that's but not the end of the world no big deal uh another one gary kitchen's battle tank oh wow battle tank also a rental yes yes it was a rental i had super battle tank war in the gulf which for a while when they're putting out those military games, you know, based on the Gulf War, uh, again, which my father just dominated all of them. Um, this I never owned. When I saw this one, I thought this was really cool. I never actually had this one, uh, Battle Tank, but the box, very great condition, very, very nice. little um, wear and tear to it. Uh, cartridge, this one I want to show because this got a couple stickers on it. But beyond that, the label itself. Oh, wow. Label's very nice. Uh, okay, the, two more, and then we'll we'll uh, get to you. This one I picked up from a friend, or uh, now a friend of the show, and it is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Ooh, very nice. Now this one, this one I picked up at the Aviator Retro Expo um, okay. back in January. 
And that was the one where Frank helped out. You weren't able to attend. It, I don't expect, you know, it's, the fly-in is nuts. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Frank was there. Yeah, you, don't, you know I don't like to fly. Chris Lewis was there helping out. Frank Messina was there. Uh, and I saw this box, and I'm like, that's a good – I mean, it's got some rip and everything to mm -hmm. it. But overall, the box is just looking just fantastic. No, 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 that's in pretty good shape. Uh, did you ever finish that game? No, no. Uh, really, uh, one. It was a surprisingly good game. I enjoyed it. Oh, very good game. Yeah. I just got to, I just got to look up the what the phone number. The gave phone you. number is yes. The phone number gave you yeah. Um, and I want to give a shout out because this one I really liked, and again became a friend of the show. Uh, you can find him on Instagram, J H A Collectibles. J H A Collectibles. He's at a lot of the shows. He's got a lot of cool, not only video games, but a lot of like retro toys. Mm -hmm. He has this collection of He Man toys Ooh. and like Castle Grayskull and stuff. Oh, it's it's awesome. Very, very, very cool. cool. And the last one I want to show, and this is the one that I just literally found in the middle of nowhere. I'm at uh, some one of the flea markets out here on Long Island with a buddy of mine, uh, Harry, actually. And we went into this other store. It was like a, it was a, um, uh, a comic book store that we didn't even know was there. It opened like a year prior. So we go in looking at some comics, cool stuff. And just on a, a fun side note, the owner of the shop goes, uh, hey, guys, you want to check this out in the back? Now, if we were like 10 or 11, um, it would been arresting. Wait, wait, was this a bike shop? No, no. Oh, okay. No, thank goodness. But he had... Was right, your friend's like, name hey. Dudley? No, no, no. Okay. But he did... He had a collection of, like, old, like... Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily porno uh, comics, but more adult-themed comics. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, interesting. But... They were in boxes. It was just in the back in like a, a, a storage sen uh, s section. But out of the corner of my eye, I see this box. It's a Nintendo game, Defender of the Crown. Yes. Now, not – I mean, I never really played it. It's from Ultra. Um, I never really heard a lot of it being an amazing game. I'm not saying it's a bad game. But for – this guy just had it sitting on the top of boxes, $5. This was 5 bucks. Wow. The box is in almost, I'm not going to say mint, but almost perfect condition. No, it's in fantastic condition. Yeah. And not not only that, you know, we, uh, I thought. Did you break it? Was, yeah, right. My luck. Uh, no, the, the instruction, yeah, the instruction booklet's in there. I just can't get to it. There can't it get it. So, no, I got it. So the instruction booklet, good condition. Mm -hmm. Very, very good very condition. Very nice. And not only that, but the cartridge looks like it was wasn't even touched by human hands until now. I was just gonna say it, it almost looks brand new. It, it, Five dollars. I'm like uh, done. Yeah. You know, no question you, about that like, one. Went with, with kung fu with you. You're like, you know. Oh yeah, I was, I was shocked with that up. one. So. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So that is my collection of boxed games. Uh, hopefully, you quite enjoyed that. And um, my. Wait, 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 wait. You're done. Yeah, I don't have any other boxes. What? But but where are the Virtual Boy games? Oh, oh that's, right. that's right. Nobody nope, collects those. One. Hold on, I got one. No, nope, no, nope, no. There are no there are no virtual. You know why? Nobody because nobody kept the Virtual Boy games because nobody likes them. It's right there. Where? Galactic Pinball. Oh sure, whatever. Right there, right there. Galactic. I can go get uh -huh. it. No, no, no. Yeah. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody wants to see them. Nobody cares about them because. Hashtag VB sucks. No, what? Shame on me. I forgot to pull that one out when I was Yeah, see, for the... Larry, look, see, you're coming around. You're becoming <laughs> one of us. You're you're joining the rest of the world in unison. Oh, I guess no, the virtual that's boy. Terrible. Yeah. Like leaving my child in the back of a car. Don't worry, I don't have any children. Um, I also Anymore. have, which I didn't, bother, I didn't bother to pull out. Um, wow. I do have a bunch of um, uh, e reader games. E reader uh, yes. cards. That Mm -hmm. Some of them are, are slightly open, but uh, I got a good handful of those as well. Okay. Um, that's my collection. That is your collection. And yeah. you know what? I think uh, let's take a moment to catch our breath. Sure. And uh, when we uh, when we come back, uh, I'll go through mine. I'll go through my box games. Larry, it's October. It is. I can feel it the chill October. in the air. The, uh, the, October. The, the chill is in the air in New York. Not here, um, and uh, but we're we're inching closer to Halloween, and I know um, we usually, um, especially me, you know, I love talking horror. 
Um, and and we can talk horror in video games, which is why I thought we could focus on a very special retro birthday uh, in the horror genre to kick off our October. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. 30 um, days till Halloween, Halloween. It Halloween. is 30 days till Halloween. Silver Shamrock. So, <laughs> um, so this this game uh, this game came out um, back on October first in nineteen ninety seven. So it's celebrating oh. its twenty first birthday. Uh, right. It's not a particularly well known game, but but it's a game that I I've talked about before because I'm actually very fond of the series um, okay. that came out uh, that came out with this. So we are celebrating the twenty first birthday of the original Clock Tower game for the Sony PlayStation. Wow, that's 21 years ago? Yeah, that was on October Holy 1st, 1997. And, I, and Clock Tower was actually, even though it sounds like it's the first game in the series, it was actually the second game in the series. The first game in the series was a game called D. That was, that, it was just the letter D. Oh, I didn't know Clock Tower was a sequel to that. Yeah, basically, yeah, it was the same oh. characters from D, continuing story. Wow. Uh, and base and the the Clock Tower game, if you haven't heard about this game, it's a survival horror game, but it's also a point and click adventure game at the mm -hmm. same time. So you're trying to figure out who the uh, who this killer is. His name is Scissor Man, and you have two you have two different protagonists in the game, <clears throat> and based on the decisions you make in the game, you can have up to ten different endings. Good lord. Uh, and the game basically unfolds like a horror movie. So there's a point and click adventure where you're doing um you're doing some sleuthing, you're trying to find out information, and then in the evening, um you get attacked by Scissor Man. And uh, Scissor Man is the, is the is the villain and you basically have to survive um survive Scissor Man's attacks um so you can continue playing the game and uh, you know and have it unfold. Now the game ran really slow. Granted, this was like kind of one of the earliest games like this. I've seen some game. I never played it, but I've seen yeah. gameplay. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a slow moving game. However, um, it was just it was just something different for the time. It was really interesting, uh, unique, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and it had it had a really interesting story. So, you know, um, you know, I I still own the original version of the game. Uh, I have one, two, and th uh, part three actually came out on PlayStation Two. Okay, uh, that was the last one to come out. Uh, but definitely a great series. Uh, if you like those kind of point-and-click games and love a little horror mixed in, it's October. Great thing to pick up. So happy birthday, Clock Tower. That is this week's Retro Birthday. All right. All right. So we did a little flipperoo there in the break. And mm -hmm. uh, now, Anthony, now I know you have a ton more box games than I do. I don't know if you're going to go through all of them. We may not have time. No, I'm gonna, I, I, I've... Uh, I've done some selections so uh, you know you've shown yours and now i'm gonna show you mine yeah you know it's about time full full exposure yeah full exposure to our, our boxed games Absolutely. um and again like like larry said i do have quite a bit and I, i'll be honest with you a major uh, a large portion of what i have is from japan because a lot of the games i bought there were boxed so i'm not going to go through everything um uh, yeah. uh, i would like to go through ones that have a little bit of story to them yeah so um and i'm gonna try i'm gonna go backwards in age so, oh, like you okay, did, gotcha. start with the most recent, go to the oldest. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm going to start with, um, uh, I actually have a couple of N64 games. I was just going to share one because I found this, um, I found this at, I forget which convention I was at. I think it might have been the um, SoCal Retro Gaming Expo um, okay. recently. Uh, no, 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 my mistake. This one I picked up in Las Vegas at a Gamer's Paradise. Oh, which is okay. a retro game, which is a great retro gaming store out in Vegas. It's right, uh, it's right off the Strip, right okay. off the Las Vegas Strip, near the uh, Pinball Hall of Fame. Yes. So, which actually one of the, uh, I think uh, I don't remember. Somebody told me that the store or the Pinball Hall of Fame moved. I'm gonna, I'll find out in a couple of weeks because I'm going to Vegas. So, um, <laughs> uh, I will, I will come back with a full report. But anyway, see, um, this was a great. Um, this was a great 3D game, uh, 3D uh, pr um, perspective game on the uh, uh, on the N64, and it really started to show really how powerful this, the N64 could be with a licensed film franchise. And I'm talking about Star Wars: Shadow of the Empire. Oh, classic! Cla this, That's a nice box too. Yeah, this game. I mean, it's 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 got it's a little bent if it's, you look at it yeah. this way. You know, it does. Yep. You know, and it only it has the game and the instruction booklet, which is cool. You know, oh, okay. you always want both. Oh uh, wow! It does not have the the piece to hold the game. The game is <laughs> yeah. loose inside, so it's just flopping around. But the you know the this is always the this is always the thing that does not exist 
when you buy it, you can get a game in a box but a lot of times the instruction booklet's missing and i feel like that the box adds value but that instruction booklet adds a lot of value yeah it's the instruction the booklet that really makes yep. it complete so um if you can yeah so if you can land something with the instruction booklet you're really golden so um yeah so star wars shadow of the empire definitely oh yeah this game if you have not played it you're really you're really <laughs> missing out um so then uh, after that, I'm going to jump over. Uh, that that was all I really wanted to show for the N64. Okay. Uh, for Super Nintendo, um, Larry, we I actually, these I picked up. I definitely picked these up at the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo because I remember there was a guy who was selling stuff and he had glass cases that he kept everything in. Uh, High-end so, stuff. Yeah. The goods. The good stuff. So, uh, you know, so I had to read through the, you know, you read through the boxes sideways and try and pick out what, you know, what you wanted. <laughs> and I saw these two games and I think they were 10 bucks each. Oh. Um, and for those of you who haven't listened to us before, um, or for those of you who have listened to us before and are sick of hearing this, we are wrestling fans. Larry and I are both big wrestling fans, pro wrestling fans. Oh. So it only made sense for me to pick up these two games which are wwf raw Ooh. and uh, and wwf wrestlemania the arcade <laughs> game both good raw was amazing yeah and these were in, these are in those uh those plastic oh yeah we as tell, well yeah. if you can tell um but again yeah these were two really great games and raw raw holds a special place in my heart because this was the game when it came out if i remember correctly it was in 1994 um yeah it was 1994 we just met. uh we we had just met uh, so we did bond over this game, but also yeah. this is the infamous game that I remember. Um, uh, I made my mother uh, give it to me twenty three day, twenty two days before Christmas because I knew she bought it for me, <laughs> and I just wanted to play it. I told her, "Look, I was like, I don't care if you bought it. You know, if I, you know, if it's supposed to go under the tree, I was like, just give it to me now. I will play it. And you know what? And and I and I lived up to my part of the bargain. Not only did I play it." All the way through December, you know, I played it for years and years before I sold it back to Funko Land like an idiot. Um, oh, well, yeah, well, no, yeah. no, no, wait, no, 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 my mistake. I still, I still have this loose. Oh, also, okay, I still have it loose, also. But I picked this up because I wanted the box. It's and, a nice box, you know. And maybe I don't remember. Maybe the instruction booklet is in here. Ooh, we're about to find out. Yeah. Hey, fun fact as well. That was the game. Yes, when we first hung out. That was the game that we played that, you know, like, hey, you come over and play Raw. No problem. And then if, there it is. Instruction is booklet instruction is booklet. included. Beauty. Yep, Beauty. So very and nice. Then, very um, nice. Infamously, I was mugged on the way home the first day I hung out with you. Yes, and we've heard that story. Get over it. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been uh, 23 years. 24 <laughs> years almost. Who says I'm not compassionate? Hey, shame on them. I had a backpack full of Super Nintendo games, and all they wanted was the money out of my pocket. So there you go. Hey, you know what? You should count yourself lucky that that's all they wanted. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Oh. Just be right. thankful. Okay. Oh, well. So now we're going to um, – uh, well, you know what? Since I showed Super Nintendo, it would only make sense to show Super Famicom, right? Yeah, why not? Okay. So I bought this game because I love the American version of this game. There is no way – I can really ever play this version uh, on the Super Famicom because I will never understand what they're saying in it. <laughs> um, but I had to buy it because, one, it wasn't very expensive because, again, um, Japanese people take care of their games. Um, and I have to say, I really love the cover art, so I had to pick up Super Mario RPG. Ooh, that is nice cover art. Beautiful cover art. Nice also, white box. Um, for those of you who have never played Super Mario RPG, um, this game houses a character that only exists in this game and nowhere else, and that is Gino. Do you remember Gino, the doll do. that comes to life? Yeah, I do remember Gino. For some odd reason, this is the only game he's ever existed in. They never use Gino in another uh, in another Mario game or another game in general. Yeah, yeah, I think well, he. I think he. Here. Yeah, I think he pops up as a prize or something in a Smash Brothers game or something like that. Maybe, maybe. But he's never been a playable character outside of here, and he was also, I, in my, in my opinion, one of the most powerful characters in the game. And once, he, once he joins you, like I used him all the way through to the end. Okay. Very very powerful. Yeah. But anyway, but had to pick the this box up. Itself is gorgeous. Yeah, the box is beautiful and it's very very simple, very clean. 
Um, yep. You know, and then of course the descriptions on the oh, back. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, there so you go. it's just really, really ah, cool. you know what? It's funny. The back of that box looks like the front of the American version. Yeah, it kind of does, right? Because that that was the cover on the front, the, wasn't the sword it? in in the yep. castle. Meanwhile, with the Japanese version again, it's a white background just with the character. It's very, yeah. very straightforward. Yeah, just very straightforward, and uh, right. yeah, that worked very nicely for me. Um, cool. So the other Super Famicom game I wanted to share is actually when I um. I don't know which trip it was, like my, my 10th trip to Japan. Um, I started looking for games that weren't released in America. So, okay. Japanese only. Right. So I was specifically looking for Japanese exclusive games that were also listed as some of the best games you could play. So in other words, if you go online, you can find a lot of top 10 lists of you know games you can only get in Japan and whatnot. So I picked up this game uh, because I found it in a uh, store called Book Off. Uh, ah, book off, yes. Book off, and uh, it cost. This was actually one of the more pricey games that I purchased because uh, it cost probably about thirty-four bucks. Okay. Um, but it's called The Fireman, and oh yes, I remember. Okay. And it's basically it's kind of like a, it's almost like a top-down game. It's more three-quarter, if anything. But basically, you're firemen going into burning buildings, and you're mm -hmm. trying to put the fires out and save people. As you um, do. Yep. Um, the, the the front art, very kind of like that, that bubbly manga yep. look to the characters. Yep. It was also developed by Human, which are also known for making like the Fire Pro Wrestling games. Yep. yep. So, um, game's got amazing reviews. Again, um, it usually makes the top 10 list for Japanese exclusive games for the Super Famicom. Uh, okay. I did I did play a little bit of it, and it's actually it's very very entertaining. So if you've ah, never cool. if you've never played the Firemen, and you're in, you're into Super Famicom games, definitely take a look at that. I may have to try that when I head over there. Ah, uh, yes, yes, you should. Uh, and now we're gonna jump over to the regular Famicom before I go to NES. Okay. Um, so you shared. I dropped one. No, oh, there, there it goes, no. and it just decreased in value. And there I and, go. And the cat ran away with it. Uh, oh, cats, where are you? Um, <laughs> You showed um, you showed Super Mario Brothers three, which I thought was really really cool, but we all know the story about the original Super Mario Brothers two, and how yes. the Japanese version was a direct sequel to the original Super Mario Brothers, um, but they thought it was too difficult for Americans to play, so <laughs> too they difficult for North America, right? Yep. So they took a game called Doki Doki Panic. Mm -hmm. And they re and they basically reskinned it with Mario and Mario characters to come out with Super Mario Brothers two, in the U S. Which However, is still a classic. Which is still a classic. Yeah, it was still a classic game. However, then th they then released it, that version in Japan, and they couldn't call it Super Mario Brothers two because they oh, had a Super Mario Brothers two. So they decided to call it Super Mario Brothers USA, mm -hmm. as a USA version. So I so I picked that up. Ah, oh, cool! In this lovely little pink box, and what? What? It's weird because the Super Mario USA box is a vertical. The art's vertical, where Instead my Super Mario Bros. Bros. Three was horizontal. So when you held it vertical, it almost looks smaller than the other boxes. But uh, yeah, very, very well, bright pink. I believe because I think this is vertical because this was a re-release. This was a re-release in 1992. The oh, original okay. version of it came out in 1988. But it's vertical, yeah. and you can see Mario throwing uh, a turnip at Bowser. Yeah. Or <laughs> about to throw a turnip. Uh, but anyway, like, what I like about this box itself, it's like it, uh, the pink really makes it stand out. I yeah, mean, obviously, it's, it's like super bright. Fuchsia. Yeah, it's definitely super bright, and you, you can't miss it. Um, and then and then there's a nice Mario head on the back. So. Ah, very nice. Yep. So right, Mario 2, very, very cool. Um uh, this game I found uh, I also found in Book Off and I found it very inexpensively I think it was like maybe all of like four or five bucks tops I can't um, beat that and um, it's a Konami game that I know you're a huge fan of because I know how much you love side scrollers ah. so I picked up um, Gradius Ooh, oh look box. at the artwork and you can see on the, that and the artwork on this Holy is really really cow. the artwork is really beautiful on this one um, gorgeous alien spaceships you know shooting down yeah, each other looks just almost Star Wars like. Very Star Wars like, that. and then they had some, you know, some stuff yep. in there to show you, um, some screen images. But again, kind of basic. Um, the silver, the silver seemed to be um, when you play Konami's go-to. 
Yeah, the Silver was Konami's go-to in Japan as well. But there were other games also there where I felt like Silver was kind of the basic one. So if you were playing, if you were picking up like baseball oh. or tennis or something okay. there, the Famicom boxes were generally silver. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to my recollection, I didn't pick any of those up, um, but that's to my recollection. Okay. Um, next that one on cool. the next one on Famicom, I picked up for two reasons: one, huge fan of the series; two, uh, probably the most gorgeous artwork I've saw on a Famicom game. So uh, Final Fantasy three. Um, I saw this before. You showed yeah, me once before. This box, I'm Whoa, sorry. Look the at that. Artwork is gorgeous. That is almost hand drawn. Uh, it, I'm pretty like sure. Straight onto the box. No, no. It is. It is basically. These yeah. are basically hand drawn and then duplicated. Yeah. But um, obviously, I'm never going to play this because I can't. I can't read Japanese. Yeah, that's another. But one, yeah. but both sides of the box. Oh, look at that. Are just Even stunning. The, the back of the box is gorgeous. Artwork yeah, because well. it basically wow. it basically looks like colored pencil drawings. That's what it that's, looks like to me. Yeah. Uh, yep, watercolor that's... almost as well. Yeah, At almost least... watercolor, and it's just absolutely beautiful game. Um, the boxes here in the U.S. I don't think got this kind of treatment, absolutely so it was definitely not, worth picking no. up. Um, and then, nice. last but not least, for the Famicom, uh, of course, I had to pick this up, even though it was the re-release in 1992. Um, okay. My favorite game of all time. I can't, you know, I, I I can't say enough stuff, enough good stuff about this game. But we're talking about. The Hyrule Fantasy, Legend of Zelda. I did pay Maybe a pretty. That. I did pay pay a pretty penny for this one. That is well, I wouldn't say factory. It's sealed. Um, it it's could re- be factory. Yeah, it, no, it's resealed. Um, oh, okay, but still. But exactly. So, but again, had to had to buy this one. Yeah, uh, that artwork uh, is very nice from the from the, the Famicom version. Yeah, the artwork is awesome. I would love to get the sticker off here so you can see the whole artwork, but I <laughs> I can't without opening it, and I don't want oh, to. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, no. It's... And then on the back as well, they've got some pretty cool artwork if you yep. can see that yep so. oh beauty beauty yeah i mean legend of zelda i mean arguably one of the best games ever created and even for a re-release the box it looks damn near mint so yep good good pull on that one yep so now moving over to the american nintendo entertainment system um last week i showed you kung fu so i'm not going to show that one again <laughs> Maybe saw that uh i'm going to start with a couple of stories one is a bit very basic story which is base is loaded <laughs> um, that I picked yes. up. You know, Baseless Loaded was a great baseball game, but the reason why it I was. wanted to talk about it is because I bought this at the um, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo when I came to last New York. Year. Yep. Was that last year? Yeah, that it was, was it. yeah. Yeah, so last year. And just as the um, expo was opening, I walked up to a table, and they had bins underneath the tables they were they were still setting stuff up but there were a bunch of games they weren't taking out that were in bins and i saw bases loaded now i already had bases loaded two in its box so i asked oh, okay. so i asked this kid who was setting stuff up young guy maybe like 1920 how much for bases loaded and basically the bins the bins were like general bins so in other words if they were in the bin they weren't they weren't worth very much like one to five dollars maybe yeah something like that so he looks at the he looks at the the game he looks confused <laughs> um and he doesn't know what to say so he's like uh uh three dollars and i'm like okay sold <laughs> i hand him a five dollar bill he goes over yeah. to the other guy who's setting mm-hmm. up the table down the way asking for change and he's like can i get change and i'm i'm overhearing the conversation because they're a little farther away and, yeah, and the guy's yeah. like what did you sell he's like i sold bases loaded and he's like you just sold a game in box for three dollars <laughs> but it was in the bin. Yep. Yeah, but you know what? He honored the payment, and I still got the game for three bucks. <laughs> and it's a, again a very. Uh, I'm not going to say mint, but very good condition. Oh yeah, no, it's in excellent condition. There's no question about yep. it. I mean, it's super clear. Oh yeah, look at that. Um, and then this one, I was. Uh, I'm going to show really quickly, only because you just brought it up. Um, the only game, the only NES game where the seal of approval is on the back anticipation with a whole bunch of weird people playing yeah, the right? game I, more people than needed for the game uh i like Definitely. a party fun i like that party fun for the- all ages nintendo's first video board game which is what it was yeah. and to be honest with you i played this game non-stop I absolutely oh game was this fantastic game. and there's your uh seal of approval there's right there seal on, the approval back. on the back nowhere yeah. to be found on the front so anticipation definitely you- 
when you go shopping for like me, if it the box is there, I mean unless unless it's like a giant like just gash into the box, I you know the the you know the little rips, the tears, the folds, I'm fine with. You really seem to go out to try and find as perfect of a box as possible is that really kind of always the case when you're looking unless it's like the only one there yeah basically if I, yeah if i'm going to get something i'm going to get uh i'm going to get the box as pristine as i possibly can okay um okay. and you know yeah I, but for certain for certain games like that i know that i want um i'll make uh you know i'll make an exception because i'm like okay i was like this is the best i'm going to get so i'll grab it i was okay. like but but as close as, yeah you're right as close as i can get um i will grab it um this one um, this one I have to show, um, just because, uh, Charlie, you're a big fan of the show and I love you, but I'm never going to stop rubbing your nose in this. Oh, <laughs> blades of steel. Ah, the beauty. Blades. There's that silver Konami box. There's that silver Konami box. And I believe I picked this up for 10 bucks. Really? Also at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. Okay. And okay. it's in great shape. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah now the cartridge cool. is loose. The uh, the little uh, styrofoam definitely is not in here, uh, uh, and it was it definitely was a rental. <laughs> you can okay. see on the cartridges yeah. that they were a rental. It was a rental at a store called Oh, interesting. Maybe I got this in California because uh, it's <laughs> a, a rental store called Video Grand in Pasadena. Oh, all right. Oh, and the styrofoam's in there, oh, <laughs> but no uh, instruction oh. booklet. I kind of yeah. This one I got that one in New York. It's funny. I keep uh, Game On. I don't know if they still have it. Has in box uh, the Blades of Steel. And Blades of Steel was a game that me and my cousins used to play just ad nauseum mm -hmm. every time. It was like the only, for some reason, it was like the only NES game I remember them owning was Blades of Steel. Uh, shout out to my cousins, Jamie and Brian. And we used to play it often. I keep mm -hmm. wanting to pick it up just for that factor. I may pull the trigger eventually. Well, you definitely should. I mean, it's not a very expensive game. So yeah, it's easy to get your hands on. And to be honest with you, it was the it was the most entertaining hockey game on the NES for sure. One of the best. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. loved it. Yep. Uh, I got two more games for the NES I want to share. Okay. Um, do you have, while you're preparing there, do you have like a lot of crossovers where like you have, or are you looking to get like the Japanese version and the American version? Oh yeah, no, I definitely have crossovers of stuff. Uh, there's no question about it. But not necessarily boxed. Um, some of them okay. I actually, some games I actually own loose and in box because I had the loose one first and then I found it in box. Okay. Um, so that happened as well. So this NES game was actually uh, gifted to me by my friend Rich, uh, and I thank him very much for it uh, because it's uh, one of my uh, one of one of the first off one of the worst games on the NES, but <laughs> uh, but I didn't care. So, okay. um, uh, and, I, and I've played through it and beaten it a thousand times over, and it's perfect for the month of October, even though they have a new game out that you can play online on your Xbox One or PlayStation 4, there's nothing like the original Friday the 13th. Ooh, and nice, in box, very nice box, that, Be that iconic Jason Voorhees on the front. Which That's right, was beware of the purple and blue Jason. <laughs> Who's not on the cover? The purple and blue is not on the cover, so that's deceiving. Then you get in there and you go, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, like, what the hell am I playing? And why isn't there? You know, why? Why is Jason purple and blue? It also has the instruction booklet, which is very oh, nice. cool. Oh, nice, yes. nice. It's always good uh, quality to that. Unfortunately, uh, made by LJN. I was make, gonna say, make, if make you don't mind, hold the box up again for a second, because I think LJN. Another one. Do you remember a lot of LJN boxes for the NES? Did it like was their go-to look that whole kind of like you know you had the the black on the left? And oh right. no no, LJN oh, okay. was always different. All right all right. Yeah, oh. LJN was always different. But the one thing you always got to see was that rainbow LJN logo. Yeah yeah. And you and always still... knew when you saw well if you were smart enough when you saw the LJN logo you knew to stay away from that game. It was gonna be terrible. Yeah. Yes. Uh, last but not least on the NES, I got to say, la, again, another game, one of my favorite games on the NES. Um, uh, and I, I knew eventually I was going to pick this up in box. The box, the, the, the version of it that I got is not the best box. Again, it's kind of similar to your Top Gun, I want to say. It looks like there was some water damage because it's a little warped. Okay. But I don't care because I got my hands on the uh, Lucasfilm Games oh. original. Maniac Mansion. 
Oh wow! Yeah, and the box is look. The box looks good in terms of the the yeah. artwork and everything like that, and it's complete. It's just it's just a little warped, uh, but All otherwise. Right. Now, what I love about the the Maniac Mansion box is how long of a description you get for the game on the back. Like they give they wow, that's you, a novel. Yeah, yeah you got to read the. It's a a, a four paragraph story <laughs> on this game, and again, wow. this is one of those point and click adventure games. Um, and uh, but to be honest with you, I mean, Lucasfilm Games knew how to make a good game. Um, and Maniac Mansion was fantastic. Uh, the sequel, Day of the Tentacle, was arguably better. Um, and then if you go later down the line, there's another game that I think one of the last games Lucasfilm Games made, um, that I've never played and always wanted to because everybody raves over it. And it's a it's like a, a, a noir game called okay. Grim Fandango. Oh, yes, 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 that everybody talks about, but anyway. Uh, Maniac Mansion, super trippy game, really fun, really weird, right up my alley. Um, definitely, I was definitely happy when I was able to find this in a box. You remember the TV show? Yes, I do. <laughs> and in fact, I actually, I think I wound up finding this on um, eBay, ultimately. Oh, okay. That's where I picked this up. Sweet. Because in box, this game, I think, goes, like, I think it goes for 70 or 80 bucks. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. All okay. right. Okay. That's NES. Now I know that's where you stopped. I go back a little uh, further. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you do have some hand some handfuls. I have, I, I have a handful of uh, games from the Atari that I wanted to share. But Ooh. before I get to that, um, I'm going to show you a game that I picked up, even though I don't own the system anymore. So there's no way I can play this game. Um, and it, I believe it's from 19. I want to say 1981, 1982. Um, but I picked it up specifically because of the game itself and that would be the advanced dungeons and dragons Ooh. game for the intellivision now i was a huge fan of dungeons and dragons as a kid i played the role-playing game i was a dungeon master with my friends <laughs> had a blast never played the intellivision version but i had to pick this up because the box looked like it was in really good shape even though yep. intellivision games are super cheap to buy even in box um they were made yeah. in abundance but the cool thing about it is oh. Not, yeah, that's how it opens. Not only do you get a cartridge with it, but remember it had a number pad. So you had to put these the overlay, on, the, yep. on the, the overlay. But it also had the instruction booklet. Okay, very nice. And it had the vintage, uh, the Venture cartridge instructions that came with the game. Venture cartridge, okay. I, don't, I honestly don't know exactly what that is. <laughs> how uh, to insert the game into the system. Basically... But, um, you know, and then, of course, they, they were the they, for two players, if you want. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, um, so I definitely... The artwork on that is beautiful. Yeah, the artwork on this is, is absolutely stunning. And that's what we're going to start to see now, like with the Atari, like you mentioned earlier, back then, 70s, early 80s, yep. that's all they went by was the box art. The art we're not talking yep. street shots, we're talking box art. Right, box art sells games. Yep. So, um, so I'm going to flip through these really quickly. Um, okay. This this one I this one I picked up um, at a store in Burbank by me in Burbank California, um, and I used to, and I remember having this game. It was a very it was a difficult game, and I honestly can say that I don't really I don't I, I mean you did you didn't beat games back then. You basically played them until you died. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. But there was something that I always found appealing to me, and the box was just in too good a shape to pass up. Um, so I picked up uh, Tutankhamen for oh, the wow. Atari. Very nice um, cover art. Yeah, beautiful cover art. And again, uh, the cover art is what sold the game. And you have you have the sarcophagus of King Tut with some cobras. Um, and not only that, Atari games were interesting because when third parties made games for the Atari, they were also compatible with other systems. So you'll yeah, you would see weird, you would yeah. see a label on the bottom of the boxes sometimes. This one specifically said for Atari twenty six hundred, Sears Video Arcade, and other compatible systems. Whatever that would mean. <laughs> Um, they would just put that to cover, you know, yeah, in case it worked. Uh, and this very was actually nice developed by Parker Brothers, which, which is very funny to hear sometimes. Yes, because Parker Brothers is mostly known for board games. Yeah, but back in the seventies um, and er and early eighties, when video gaming be started to become a craze, a lot of a lot of general companies like Parker Brothers and others. Um, wanted to get in on it so they started developing video games on their own very cool which is cool um so uh also for the atari 2600 another game that i picked up again because i thought the box the box was in uh 
really good shape. Uh, it was a great, um, it was a great maze game, uh, kind of like a Pac-Man style game, and it was called Maze Craze. Uh, oh yes, yes, and it was a, a game of cops and robbers. Again, bright oh, orange yeah. box, uh, yeah. a really good um, Is image. That like a photo? Yeah, no, no, it's it, it almost looks like it could almost be like a painting. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah nice. guy running away with a, a bag of money with the cops behind him on his tail. Um, yeah. And th- and I said like like I said this played kind of like a uh, kind of like a Pac Man style game. Yep, so it yep. makes crazy, which is really cool. Um, all right, heavy hitters, heavy hitters coming in. Oh, here we go. Cannot, here we go, folks. You cannot have an Atari twenty six hundred without this game. This was like the must own game, right? It was the must own game in my house because um, I didn't get to play it as much as I wanted to because my parents were too busy fighting over the system <laughs> on who wanted to play next. Uh, on our little on a little black and white television in our dining room that we had, um, <laughs> but um, I saw this at the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo, uh, and I had to pick it up. The original Asteroids. Oh, beauty! That's an yep. iconic cover on Asteroids. Yes, everybody Every- knows the cover of Asteroids with the ship shooting the asteroids coming at it. Everybody knows yep. this cover. You want to talk about false advertising? Exactly, because when you turn this sucker on, it did not look like this. And there's no photos on the back. There's no gameplay no, on the back. No, no photos on the back, just a short description. Um, and for those of you who don't know what Asteroids is about, allow me to explain. If you uh, don't know, I don't know if you listen. Right, if you don't know, this is how they explained it in 1981. So this is, uh, we're talking 37 years ago. Uh, your spaceship is trapped in a deadly asteroid belt. You will have to destroy the drifting asteroid boulders before they destroy your spaceship. But... Watch out for enemy spacecraft. Fire your <laughs> missiles to destroy the boulders and the enemy. Just like, just like in real life. Yep, yeah, just very straightforward. Um, but again, um, one of the most iconic games ever created. Question. Like, yes. I don't know if you know on the front because the other game Oops, I dropped. Um, uh, that you showed had as well the number that says sixty six on the cover. The one you showed right before said two fifty six. I wonder if those mean anything. Oh, I think um, I think what the numbers were. Um, I honestly think what the numbers were were um, just to promote the system itself. So, in other okay. words, when uh, I would assume when Asteroids came out in 1981, there were 66 games on the Atari. That's what I was thinking. Okay. When Maze Craze came out, and I'll give you a date. Oh no, that's not right, because Maze Craze is 1980. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Curious. Yeah, it's something to look into. If anyone knows, hit us up on our Facebook page, <laughs> uh, you know, Retro Gamers Podcast, and yep. either one or email us. Email and you know, the the other thing interesting about these uh, these boxes, and I'm looking at them now, is that on the backs, they would give you your warranty on the actual cartridge. <laughs> so you would read here. So on the back of the asteroids one, I have a, a limited 90 day warranty, which I'm pretty uh, sure has expired. Yeah, maybe. But they give you the customer service locations in California and New Jersey. <laughs> really? There was one in Jersey? What city? Uh, Somerset. Oh, all right. And, uh, yeah, so Somerset, New Jersey, and Sunnyvale, California. Not so, Sunnydale. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounded familiar. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no vampires in Sunnyvale. Um, <laughs> and then they also had a repair service number. They had a, a two 1-800 numbers. One That's for the cool. continental U.S. and one for California. <laughs> well, uh, even back in California, one. Yeah, there's kind of something wrong different. with that. But what I also, what I just found funny too was on the back of the Maze Craze box, there's a service agreement. Oh. On the bottom, which basically says, uh, and I just want to, I just want to read it because it's interesting. Because uh, it's interesting. Yeah. If after the 90 day limited warranty period. Your Atari unit requires service. Atari Inc. will service the unit on receipt, postage paid, with your check in the sum listed. So if you wanted to if you wanted to have your video computer system console unit serviced, it would okay. cost you thirty six dollars. Oh, wow. That's well in nineteen eighty one? Yep. That's yeah, if you wanted penny. if you wanted your game serviced, it was yeah. six dollars. Oh, oh, and if right. you wanted any of your handheld controllers, your joysticks, if you wanted your joystick serviced, oh, all right, um, it would cost you five dollars per joystick. All right, not too shabby. Um, that's funny. The, the fact to get a game fix, you never think about getting a game fix. Yes, 
Exactly. Yeah. So, but again, back then, sometimes um, with these cartridges, you drop it in a chips or something. Oh yeah, of course. They may have been easier to fix. Okay. Last, last two, really quickly. All right. Um, and these two, to my knowledge, I could be wrong. They may be, they may be, um, they may have been redone. But I really do think that these are the original games, shrink wrapped, unopened. Ooh. These okay. Have, to my knowledge, these have never been opened before. Mm. Okay. Um, and this game is probably one again one of the most iconic games on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. It was featured primarily. Uh, it was actually featured very heavily in the Ready Player One book. I don't think it made it oh. into the movie, but it was a big game in the book. Okay. Yep. Uh, released in nineteen eighty three on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Um, Joust. Yes. Classic. Classic, 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 classic game. game. Very classic game. And again, if you that look at this, factory sealed. It, it looks factory sealed to the point of, look, at you see the little plastic oh, yeah, tab? Yeah. The tab, yeah. The plastic tab that you, you used to hang these on, yeah. uh, on in a store. So I really do think this is the original factory sealed Atari 2600 version. Does of it kind of have like, you know, like down the back of the games had like, like where the seal came together, almost like a, like a slit? Uh, it's it looks like it to me, yes. Because to, to me, then that. But it also nice. has the, it has this. You see that slit there? Okay, okay. Yeah, see the, the, that. To me, that makes yeah. it look like it's the original factory sealed game. No, that's yeah, that that's awesome. I can definitely believe that for sure. I uh, would. And this, I also picked. This, I picked up in, um, I believe, uh, Las Vegas as well. Okay. I also picked this one up in Las Vegas, and this is the last game I'm going to share again. To my understanding, uh, the original sealed game, uh, also a game I loved to play on the Atari 2600. Absolutely loved. Um, also loved the cover art for this game because okay. the guy looks completely goofy, but it's super fun. Um, also, when we were talking about the commercials, remember mm -hmm. all the, uh, the, the retro video game commercials? This is the game that featured a very young Jack Black in the commercial, oh. and we're talking about Jungle Hunt. <laughs> wow. Look so, at that. Oh, yeah. yeah, look at that. That is a goofy-looking person that is... on the front cover. But that again... Factory sealed? Again, factory sealed, to my knowledge. <laughs> not okay. Never opened. Okay, Just, I can believe that. Yeah, so... Um, so again, Jungle Hunt was a Jungle Hunt was another great game. You swing from vines, you swim with crocodiles, you try and save. <laughs> always, what? Yeah, basically, it, it was basically Pitfall, but called Jungle Hunt. Um, and those are all the games that I actually wanted to share. Um, and again, in terms of in terms of these, like with the with the with the boxes and everything like that, I honestly don't know the overall value for all of these things. I only know what I paid for them. But again. Um, you know the value is in you know is in everybody you know in your own eyes. I mean, uh, I liked I. There's part of me that buys games to be a collector, like the sealed ones, and then there's a part of me that buys games out of nostalgia. It's like the games I played when I was a kid, um, you know. So I have very fond memories of them. So I'm naturally gonna you know pick them up again. Uh, totally. Let me ask you because I know again you have a lot more than I do. Any honorable mentions that you didn't show here right now that you have that you're kind of happy that you have in box. Um, I Unless think, the ones that you pulled out no, were the ones. No, that... there were a couple others. Um, um, I didn't show you my NES wrestling game, so I have the original WrestleMania. Um, Ooh. the original. Uh, I didn't know you never saw that. So, oh, I didn't put that one. All honorable right. mention goes to WrestleMania oh, for the NES. Oh. Yep. And you got the back oh. as well. We which... can mail that away to Orlando. Get him to sign it. Yeah, uh, yeah, for twelve hundred dollars. Um, no, he's, he's reasonably priced. No, I know, but anyway, so like you know, my wrestling games. I love collecting my wrestling games. So WrestleMania yeah. is definitely one of them. Nice. I have. Uh, I know I have Tecmo World Wrestling also in box. Okay. Which is cool. Um, trying to think. Uh, Top Gun one and two, which was called mm -hmm. the Second Mission. Uh, <laughs> Casino Kid, which was another game I loved playing. Yes, in the I remember NES. you did show that before we started doing the YouTube. Yep, yep. Yep, I did show that. And then outside of that, I mean, um, uh, in terms of box games, I mean, I think those are all the really good ones that I have that yeah. I that I love. I have a lot of yeah. Japanese ones now. Uh, between oh, yeah. Famicom and Super Famicom, I have like uh, I have a good like like twenty at least twenty games. Okay. 
Cool. But yeah, I mean, the, you know, the, you know, that's just a sample of the collection I have. Very fond of it. I, I surprisingly own a lot of Sega CD games. You do? Okay. I do. Um, but those are games that you kept in those boxes. So we, exactly. didn't want, we didn't want to talk about that. But that's really that's really what we're talking about here. Box games. Um, cool. You know? Yeah. And, you know, for anybody, you know, who's, you know, who does the same thing that we're doing and we're listening and, uh, you know, want if you want to share a couple of images of your collections or or the games that you most favor that you ha- that you still have that are in box and everything like that, post it on our web, you know, post it on Facebook, show them to us. We'd love to see what you guys also you know, enjoy collecting. You know, post it on Facebook, tag us on Instagram if you have a picture of it. Oh, yeah, uh, that's Email thing. us a picture of it. Email at theretrogamers.com. Include your Instagram name. We'll be more than happy to put it up there and tag you with it as well. Um, and like Anthony said, definitely, definitely let let us see what you have. Expose yourselves to us. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 I don't. I, and I, I think, I, yeah, you know, and I think on that, I think we're done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? Didn't we want to close out? Oh, then we have one more segment. I don't have a mini segment. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, sorry. All right. So you know, do a little. Oops. Okay. Uh, here we go. Mm-hmm. I'll edit it. It's time. I swear. All right. So we're gonna wrap this uh, trip up. This was very cool. You know, now taking advantage of the YouTube, yes. showing some of the collections. And as we go on, you know, we're gonna be able to show more what when we get. Put it on the Instagram page. Put it on the Facebook page. Like we said. So uh, cool stuff. But we're um, uh, uh, full disclosure. It is late right now uh, when we're recording, and I am tired. <laughs> and so am I. Even though I'm three hours behind you. Yes. So, uh, Anthony, enjoy the weekend. Yes. At least from what we're recording. And, uh, yeah, so, and I'm, listen, you know, we're coming up very soon. Uh, you, I'm going to see you in about a month. Yes. Uh, and then about a month thereafter, you'll see me again. You will be uh, invading so we'll California. Yes, absolutely. Uh, totally. And we're going to do some live stuff. We'll see if we can do something live or at least a live recording here in New York. But you're busy, so I get it. But definitely we're doing something in California. No question. Start recording together and uh, maybe live streaming some gameplay where we can really get uh, get some good gameplay going. Um, other than that, folks, I think we're going to – and if you agree with me, I think we're going to bring this one to a close. I, I, th- I think it's safe to say that we're, we want to bring this one to a close. All right, everyone, thank you very much for joining us here and catch us right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.